This One Degree Outside video is brought to you by Fluidform Bio, developing innovative 3D printing living pancreatic tissue to help combat type 1 diabetes. For the first time, you can join this visionary mission. Visit fluidformbio.com or their page on Start Engine to learn more about this exciting work. Chew warning it in at the last minute here. This is your Patent Predictions on a Monday evening, admittedly a little later than usual, but want to make sure to get it to you. It's our look out to the next two weeks of weather and the meteorology that's driving that 14-day forecast you see in our app. Just a reminder, if you haven't checked it out yet, membership.1degreeoutside.com four different tiers of membership you can join. We appreciate everyone who has done exactly that. I think we're nearing 400 members now, and it's wonderful getting a chance to know y'all and interact with you along the way. Hope more of you can jump on board. All right, here's what's going on for us. Jet stream level, we're finally getting rid of a trough, a trough, a dip in the jet stream that allows for cool air and usually unsettled conditions. Oh, good, we're getting rid of that. Well, hold on a second. There's plenty more jet stream energy digging in across the nation's midsection, coming in through the western U.S., and and look at those jet stream winds. Where do they go as we head to the end of the week? Down to our south. What else is dropping in? Another upper level low over Lake Superior. That's feeding more energy into the system. And this means that we are going to carve out another very well-defined trough heading into the, up, into the upcoming weekend. That means cool and unsettled weather that will be with us for the holiday weekend. Now, you could say, when do we improve? Well, Monday, we start to see the kind of axis to that dip in the jet stream moving to the east. That's good. That brings you some improvement Sunday into Monday. Probably still be some pop-up showers, particularly in the mountains. But you'll start to get at least some breaks of sun along the way, which is good. The only thing is, if I play things farther out through next week, You'll notice that every time the jet stream tries to ride north and allow some deeper warmth to come in, there's another round of energy ready to come in, another dip in the jet stream, another trough that carves out. So they become a little bit shorter. They're not as broad, all right, but nonetheless, you're still getting them. And that means you're still going to have a tendency to be cooler than normal, which is what we had laid out in the monthly forecast and what Danielle laid out in the pattern predictions last week, too. But the other thing I think of when I look at this is when I see the source of all the energy, and you've got some of it coming from the Pacific, you get some of the digs down and then ejects back to the Northeast, you've got some that's Canadian energy. That's a lot of different air that's coming together here. And this is going to favor thunderstorm development as we get later on into the month and into the first part of June as well. So between the fact that you get the soaking rains that come when you get something like the Nor'easter coming at the end of this week, and then you've got thunderstorms that come into play next week into the early part of June, it's no surprise the next 10 days, you get tons of rain across the eastern United States. We probably come up around in over two inches of rain in New England by the time all is said and done. We definitely are keying in on Thursday as one of the days with steadiest and heaviest rain. But notice that chance remains elevated going into the holiday weekend. Even at its lowest, when you have the lowest chance of precipitation, many days are still at about 30%, which should tell you there's a little bit of flexibility on timing in here. But generally, we think that aside from a pop-up shower left over on Memorial Day and Tuesday, you're probably getting back into an unsettled uh, at least kind of period with another shot of that jet stream troughing coming in as we get to the middle of next week and then perhaps again toward the end of the period in the beginning of June. But we think that again is going to be more thunderstorm action at that point. Part of the reason I say that is because you can see heading into this weekend, the nor'easter goes by Thursday, Thursday night, but you've got cool air that lingers into Friday and frankly, all through the holiday weekend for that matter as well. Even as we get to Memorial Day, sure, it does turn milder, but this is still not warm air. The warmth is locked way, way down to the south. A lot of the country is cool getting into Memorial Day. By the time we get to the middle of next week, you still are holding on to some of that cool air. And then once we get to the end of the week, that's when we get that pattern change I was telling you about where you start to warm up. You start to get a better chance of thunderstorms rather than a cooler rain that slides through as well. Keep in mind, this time of the year, the sun angle is so strong now. We're coming up very quickly on the solstice, the strongest sun of the year, as we get to the third week of June. So we're at the point now that if you can get any sun, it makes a big, big difference in terms of temperature. So that's why when you're not getting any sun, I mean, it's ridiculously cool. Some spots may rival cool high temperatures for the date as we head uh, over the next few days and into the start of the holiday weekend. But then you do rebound. So the question then becomes, what about frost? Because we had told you in the monthly forecast and in the pattern predictions along the way, stick really close to the normals this year. And that seems to have worked out really well in central and southern New England. When you get to northern New England, you're not really off the hook till late May. I don't think it's any different. I think it's still the same advice. Stick really close to the normals. And the reason I'm saying that is because even when you look at the overnight low temperatures and say, well, they definitely build as a New England average as we get into next week, you're right. But there also are going to be some shots of some cooler, drier air. For example, behind that disturbance middle of next week, 
it's not impossible that the north country of New England does get cold enough for at least some spots of frost, even as late as the 29th. I think once you get beyond that, you're probably off the hook and you're safer to plant even in the great north. Again, if you're in central and southern New England, you're pretty much already past it. And although it'll be cool, although you got to watch out for fungus and things like that developing on the plants uh, at the same time. I don't think you're talking about a frost threat. So just a reminder, you can track every day of the 14-day forecast with our app, the One Degree Outside Weather app, totally free on the App Store and Google Play. Tell everybody you know to get it. I'll see you again uh, tomorrow, One Degree Outside and on the app.